Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are talking about the chapter 2 software development life cycles. As a part of this particular chapter we are continuing ahead and trying to understand the next segment which is 2.3 testing in development models. As a part of this segment you will understand how testing is practiced in different SDLC models and what makes it unique even if we are talking about different development models. So let's get started with some of the quick understanding here. So number one thing to understand that how exactly after given that you know the difference between a traditional model and a new agile development methodology, how exactly should we select a development model? Most importantly, it's not that agile is just because it is trending should be the only default option for any organization to start working. More importantly, there are many other factors which contribute in order to select a particular development model for their project. There are customers, there are project characteristics, there are product characteristics which are the key factors to allow you select one of the development model. When we talk about the project characteristics, we talk about the set of requirements, the time to the market and many other things which we generally look forward to. For example, a customer who is saying that my requirements are frozen but I want this to be delivered on particular date and time. At the same time, I will not be interfering in between and my requirements are finalized, frozen, there are no changes involved, so just work on it. Right? Now this is where we go with the traditional development model and not the agile. But there is a set of customer who says that you know what, I'm having just an idea. I'm not sure about what exactly the product will look like. But yeah, I want to have a lot of intervention where we keep asking you to modify things if we don't like it. Or if we are not pretty much sure that how exactly the product would look like or what are our expectations, but we just have an idea with us. And this is where agile development models would be the best options to be selected. Moreover, the customer also agrees to participate in the methodology and at the same time agrees to have transformation being done which can further delay some of the work. So customers have to in, you know, be in line with all the expectations of a development model and understand it with the pros and cons so that we can go ahead and select that particular development model. Right? So generally when we talk about selecting a development model, we try to understand how testing is practiced in these development models. When you talk about traditional models like waterfall, waterfall is a sequential development model and here the stages are performed one after the other. That means there is no overlapping between two different phases of a waterfall development model. Once the requirement gathering is completely done, that's where you switch to the design phase. Again, once the design is completely done, you move to the implementation phase. Now, a point here is that you do not have the provision of, you know, performing anything in between. That is like test design can begin while the requirements are still being gathered. No, we do not have any kind of overlap concepts. And the benefit of having this development model is the testing is also conducted once for all. But given that theoretically when you understand about waterfall, it is said so that the testing is conducted also as a particular phase and once for all. But it is always recommended that the testers should fulfill the principal early testing and participates in much earlier phases to contribute by reviewing the requirements, designs and the implemented code and finding the defects much earlier or even saying that preventing the defects much earlier. Unlike waterfall model, when it comes to the V model, it basically has a co-adherence to different activities within the development model. Recalling your learning about the V model, you understood that though it is a sequential development model, but the testers have corresponding testing activity to that of each development activity, which is fulfilling the need of uh, the challenge which we had in the waterfall, that is, a stage cannot overlap. But here also we are not trying to overlap, but we are coordinating and highlighting that the testers do not wait for the code to be implemented in order to start analyzing the requirements, right? You can pretty much start the analysis of the requirements much earlier, analyze the designs and the specs, codes, etc. right in the beginning, and be ready with the test cases to run them when you come to the dynamic test levels. 
When it comes to the iterative development models, here testing is completely different than that of the sequential models. Here testing happens repeatedly every time a new implementation is done. Here we have iterations and every iteration has some new development happening. In fact, modification to the existing ones which were already developed as well as tested. Now this is where a testing team would be required to re-perform the executed test once again to make sure that the change has not impacted the existing and of course as the new items are being implemented, there could be need of running the test cases once again or maybe doing testing quite often. Also extending a little further when it comes to talking about the continuous integration and continuous deployment CICD concepts, the testing team has to do a lot of regression in fact, sometimes the regression happens at the end of every day to make sure that each integration is not breaking the existing part of the built application. Now, given that understanding, well, now we know that a tester has to be prepared that if they are working with a waterfall methodology or if they are working with V methodology or agile methodology, they need to behave differently in order to test the particular system because of a development model in place. To add further on top of it, we're talking about some of the interesting and important characteristics of good testing. Irrespective of what type of development model you're following, you should always follow these characteristics of good testing in any development model. This is where we say in any software development lifecycle model, there are several characteristics of good testing. And these characteristics are not limited to any particular model. No matter which model do you follow, irrespective of that, these characteristics must be implemented and followed. For example, number one, for every development activity, there is a corresponding testing activity. Now, every development activity here means the preparation of the work products, not just the writing the code. A lot of people may think that development activity means implementation of the code. Answer is no. Here we're talking about the left side of the V model where business requirements are developed, system requirements are developed, architectural design is developed, and detailed design is developed as well, right? So putting it all together is what we are referring to development activities. And for each development activity, there must be a corresponding testing activity. And that activity could be analyzing that particular work product or even looking forward to design some test cases using that. The second characteristic of good testing is each test level has test objectives specific to that level. I cannot say at any point of time that I have created 500 test cases and this is all about my testing. You should be pretty much able to differentiate and tell me that what have you done in unit testing, what have you done in integration testing and system testing and so on. That means each level must have a unique objective. You cannot say that I'm doing testing. You should tell me that, hey, this is what I'm doing is called as unit testing where we are limited to the components. We are doing integration testing where we are talking about the information exchange or data exchange between two or more modules. So each level must have an objective specific to that level. The third is what kind of activities can be corresponding test activities to that of the development. So the Answer is the test analysis and design for a given test level should begin during the corresponding development activity. So these are the two activities which can be performed at any point of time much earlier in the life cycle. That is analyzing the work product. Given the analysis, you will be doing a review. You will be finding any kind of anomalies in the work product. And once you have the clarity, you have all your issues resolved, you can start designing your test cases. You don't have to wait for the code to be implemented in order to start designing. Finally, the tester should participate in discussions to define and refine requirements and design and are involved in reviewing the work products, be the work products, be anything like requirement, design, etc. as soon as the first drafts are available. That means we don't even wait. When people say that, how early should I be involved in reviewing the work products? as soon as the first draft is available, right? Because a draft is yet to be revised, yet to be worked upon, but a final version of the documentation clearly says that it is going to be a rework and rework invites extra cost for fixing an issue, right? So this is all we had in terms of understanding the characteristics of good testing. Now, given that you are a QA, you are looking forward to be a tester, or you are already a tester, these are some of the good characteristics of testing which you should be following 
irrespective of what development model you are doing. All right. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.